Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It was sent to me by one of my patrons and it's kind of funny. It says simple mathematics on top. I don't know the original source of this, but I totally think this is probably clickbait. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. So the first thing to stick out are these factorials. They look like exclamation marks. Ultimately, what it means is something like four factorial means four times three times two times one, or five factorial would be five times four times three times two times one. And one of the fun things about factorials is you'll notice these two things match. So that means we can copy down the five factorial, but in the place of this four times three times two times one, we can plug in a four factorial. So five factorial equals five times four factorial. And another way to think of that is five factorial is equal to five times five minus one factorial. And in general, this will be true for any whole number P. You can say P factorial equals P times P minus one factorial. And this looks important. Let's put a box around it. Next, let's take this whole equation and copy it down here. And let's multiply the top of both sides by P factorial. And this P factorial will distribute to both of these terms. So it's going to look something like this. This p factorial and this p factorial will cancel each other out. And the same thing for this p factorial and this p factorial. They'll cancel each other out. Now right here, these two are not going to cancel out, but we can rewrite this p factorial as p times p minus 1 factorial. And now the p minus 1 factorials will cancel each other out. And this becomes p times p, which is equal to p squared. So right now we have a p squared and a p, which makes this a quadratic, so we want to set everything equal to zero. So let's subtract p from both sides and let's add one to both sides. On the left-hand side, we can put this negative p right here, and negative 13 plus 1 is equal to negative 12. And on the right-hand side, all this stuff will cancel out, leaving us with zero. And then from here, we can do quadratic formula, we can complete the square, or we can factor. For this one, it'll probably be easiest to factor. So this p squared is going to break down into p times p. And then to take care of everything else, we need two numbers that add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 12. That would be negative 4 and positive 3. And if you want to practice more of these factoring things, I'll put a link to that video here. From here, since these two things multiply to equal 0, it will be true if either one of them is equal to 0. For this one on top, we can add 4 to both sides, and for the one down here, we can subtract 3 from both sides. So we end up with p is equal to 4 or p is equal to negative 3. Now we can plug in these values for p into the original equation to see which one works. So let's focus on this one first. Let's, oh, I gotta go real quick. I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. So let's check our work. First, we're going to focus on this one right here. In the place of all the p's, we're going to plug in 4. And then inside of this parentheses, 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. And that'll give us 3 factorial on bottom, which is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. And that's equal to 6. And then 4 sixths will simplify into 2 thirds. Now let's work on this one. This 4 factorial can be rewritten as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 12 times 2 is equal to 24. And 24 times 1 is equal to 24. And then for this last one, on top, 4 minus 1 is equal to 3, and 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We have a 3 on top and bottom. Those can cancel each other out, and that'll leave us a 1 on top. Then 4 times 2 is equal to 8, and 8 times 1 is equal to 8. Now we have 2 thirds minus 13 24 equals 1 8. Let's give everything a common denominator, and the lowest common denominator is going to be 24. So we need to multiply this 2 thirds by 8 over 8, and we need to multiply this 1 8 by 3 over 3. So we can mush these together and we can mush these together. For this one, 8 times 2 is equal to 16 and 8 times 3 is equal to 24. And then for this one, 1 times 3 is equal to 3 and 8 times 3 is equal to 24. Now that these two fractions have the same denominator, we can write them as a single fraction. And 16 minus 3 is equal to 3. And then we end up with two equivalent fractions, so we know p equals 4 checks out. Now we can look at this p is equal to negative 3. In the place of all the p's, let's plug in negative 3. And right away I'm noticing we have negative 3 factorial. Factorial is not defined for negative numbers, so we can disregard this solution. There may be some interesting stuff if we look at negative factorials, but I'm pretty sure for this problem it's meant to be undefined. If you want me to make a video about negative factorials, let me know in the comments. And if you know anything about negative factorials, let me know in the comments. Now let's go back to our problem. So p equals 4 is the solution to this simple mathematics problem. Let's put a box around it. How exciting.